With the release of Logic Pro for iPad 2, Apple have completely revamped the already super powerful drummer, adding in loads of new functionality and a pinch of AI wizardry. In this video, I'll demo how the new and improved session drummer works and share some tips on how you can use it in your Logic projects. You access the new session drummer in the same way you used to, but where before there was just the option to load up a drummer track here, you can now tap on this drop down menu and select from the three session players available. For this demo though, we'll stick with the drummer. A session player region will be created automatically and if it hasn't opened by default, you can tap the editor button to open the editors window. Here's where you can edit your drummer's performance. At the time of making this video, there are 20 different acoustic drummers, 10 electronic drummers and 3 percussionists available. You access them by tapping the portrait here. In this menu, select the drummer type from the 3 available and then select your drummer. Each different drummer track will load up different plugins that complement it. Toggling the change patch switch off will keep all current settings as is when you change drummers, only changing the session player instrument or pattern. Keeping it on will have the patch change each time you select a new drummer. All of these drummers have their own preset banks by the way, if you just want to jump in, slap different presets on and hear how they sound. The three different drummer types, acoustic, electronic and percussion, have their own specific controls but they also have some in common. No matter the drummer, you'll be able to access complexity and intensity sliders which, unsurprisingly, change the… you get the idea. On the other side of the editor's window, you'll find fill amount, fill complexity and swing controls. The fill controls allow you to affect how much fancy stuff your drummer will perform throughout their performance. while the swing control and the 8th slash 16th button let you adjust the shuffle feel of your player's current performance. You can choose to have your acoustic session drummer play with a hi-hat, ride cymbal or tom and if you tap here, you can select from several different rhythms for them to play.
You can also turn the kick and snare on or off, plus select from eight different patterns. The brighter dots indicate stronger accents and the dimmer dots weaker accents here. You can also have the drummer follow the rhythm of chord changes in the chord track if one is present, or select another track in your project and have the drummer follow that. In the details tab you can select what part of the snare your drummer will hit. add percussion, and choose specific symbols for your drummer to use. Ghost notes are simply very soft notes played on the snare drum that don't really have any attack, but they add to the flavour of the performance. You can add them to your drummer's performance here. Drag the fuel knob up to have the session player play ahead of the beat or down to play behind the beat. And the dynamics knob adjusts the range of volume. You can use the humanized knob to influence the quantization of patterns. The more to the right you turn the knob, the more rhythmically loose and maybe a bit less robotic the performance becomes. And you can adjust the tempo that your drummer pattern plays at with the tempo options here. The manual tab lets you create your own pattern for the kick and snare drum to follow. This will add a manual pattern option to the pattern menu over on the main tab. The electronic and percussion drummers work in pretty much the same way, with the only difference being additional pattern options in the main tab. And in the details tab, the addition of complexity range control for each section of the kit.
and a phrase variation slider, which adjusts the amount of rhythmic change that occurs over the course of several bars within a session drummer region. So that's a rundown of how the session drummer works. What kind of cool, interesting things can you do with it in your Logic projects? Well, you can swap out the drummer instrument that Logic uses for a third-party AUV3 app, for example. Now, you can swap this out for whatever third-party instrument you want, though. Obviously, a drum-based instrument will make the most sense. For example, I have a pattern here that I like the feel of, but I want a more unique drum kit sound. Ting by Clevgrind is a unique rhythm instrument that plays percussive sounds originating from everyday things laying around at home, such as silverware, a sofa, a toy drum, or a pair of car keys. Yes, I know, bear with me, it makes sense, I promise. Each sound is multi-sampled, meaning that different velocities will produce different variations of the sounds. This pairs perfectly with Logic Pro's Session Drummer, particularly as I have the performance set up to be quite dynamic. With the Session Drummer track selected, it's simply a case of opening its plugins window, tapping the Drum Kit Designer plugin, selecting Replace, finding Clevgrind from the list of developers, and then Ting from their list of instrument plugins that I have installed. If you want to get even more control over your rhythm tracks, you can quickly and easily convert your session drummer track to MIDI. Get your drum pattern as close to what you're looking for as possible, double tap the drummer region, in the menu that pops up tap on convert, and then select convert to MIDI region. You can also convert to a pattern region if you want to as well. Now you can dive into the editor and fine tune add or remove notes, and really perfect your drum beat. Let me know your thoughts on Logic Pro for iPad Session Drummer down in the comments, and if you could give that like button a good hard slap on the way past, I'd really appreciate it. Another of Logic Pro for iPad 2's new features is, for my money, one of the best sounding instruments on iOS. What do you think? <laughs>